Hi, in this video we're going to look at what are called the component and the projection of one vector onto another. So this is something that's used a lot in physics, for example, when we're trying to determine how much one vector lines up with another. Uh, for example, a force vector aligned with the direction of motion uh, would be one of the uh, applications of this. There's other reasons that you might do this as well. Um, but what I've drawn here is a couple of vectors, and I want to label on that picture what it is we're actually talking about here, and then we'll look at deriving some formulas for how to calculate that. All right, so it doesn't really matter which vector I start with, but uh, I'm going to look at the component, first of all, the component of this vector v along my vector w that I have here. So what we're trying to measure is how much of this vector v is lined up with the vector w. So we can think about this in terms of a little right triangle here. And what I want to measure in this picture is how much of this vector v is lined up or along this vector w. So this is what we're wanting to measure here. This is the component of v along w. And your vectors in your picture might be labeled different things. So they might be f for force and v for velocity vector or whatever. So you don't want to get too hung up on the symbols here. But what you're measuring is the component or how much one vector is along another vector. So we have a couple of tools that we already know about right triangles. And we're going to basically put some of those things together and look at a formula that you're going to use to calculate this component of one vector along another. All right, so I do have a right triangle here. And when we talked about dot product, we talked about the dot product geometrically as having to do with that angle, the cosine of that angle, actually, uh, between the two vectors here. So we actually have two big tools that we're going to connect uh, to come up with a formula for this. So one of them is just basically right triangle trigonometry. Uh, so what we're measuring here is the adjacent side on this right triangle. And so you might remember that cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, I'm going to solve that for the adjacent side here. So the adjacent side, which is the component of v along w, would be equal to uh, the length of the hypotenuse, so that would be the magnitude of my vector v, the length of the hypotenuse times cosine theta. So this is essentially just cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, but I've multiplied through by the hypotenuse so that we've solved for what we're after here. So this is one way to think about that. We also have from the dot product definition, Uh, relationship that involves cosine theta when we're talking about these two vectors here. So from our dot product relationship, we know that if we take the dot product of two vectors, v and w, that v dot w is equal to the magnitude of v times the magnitude of w times cosine theta. And if we look at these two equations that I have here, uh, you'll see that I have a magnitude of v times cosine theta on one side of each of them. So if I solve this equation for magnitude of v times cosine theta, we get this relationship. Uh, whoops, I forgot my magnitude of v in there. All right, so we get this relationship here. So we can put that over here. And what you'll find in your textbook is the formula for the component of v along w that uses dot product. So what we're doing here is noticing that on the right side of these equations, we have magnitude of v times cosine theta. And so that means the left side of the equations are equal. So this is a formula that you will use often, not all the time, uh, but quite often. So it is worth committing to memory. If you forget it, you can always go back through like we just did here, thinking about the trigonometry of it. Uh, but the dot product of the two vectors divided by the magnitude of the vector that you're projecting onto. So there are two vectors here. So it's important that you're dividing by the correct magnitude here. This is the magnitude of the vector that you're projecting onto. And the notation here, component of v onto w, the subscript vector here, is the vector you're projecting onto. And that's what you need to remember to divide by the magnitude of. 
All right, so this picture that I drew here is for an acute angle. Uh, and so we have a right triangle here. But we also know that we might not have an acute angle between our two vectors. There could be an obtuse angle between those two vectors. So I just want to draw another picture where we have an obtuse angle and label what's happening in that picture and just make sure that we're clear about what this represents here. All right, so if I have an obtuse angle between two vectors, let me just draw two different vectors, but I'm going to label them V and W also. I'm going to make this one, this W, very long there. All right, and so then this would be the angle theta between them. But what I'm wanting to measure in this case, as well as in the other case, is how much of V is along W. And you notice in this case that the part of V that is along W is in the opposite direction of W. So that's going to be important when you look at physics and things like forces acting in a direction opposite motion that's going to change how things move as opposed to a force that's acting in the same direction as motion. But we're still looking at the same uh, description here in a right triangle. It's not actually this angle theta, but this other uh, angle in this right triangle that we're looking at. So when we measure and we calculate this dot product here and divide by the magnitude of W, again, the vector that we're projecting onto, this is actually what we'll get. And so we will have that component of V along W. It's important to understand here that uh, when I have an obtuse angle, this dot product will be negative. Right? Thinking about this, this dot product will be negative when I have an obtuse angle. So this number will be a negative number. So the component of V along W in this case, the length of that side of that triangle is represented by the actually the absolute value of this. So the length is the absolute value of the component of V along W. And the fact that I end up with a negative from this dot product, a negative component of V along W, would tell you about the direction. So the sign tells you the direction, that it's in the direction opposite motion. All right, so the negative would be important there for that. All right, so uh, this is really what we're after here, the component of one vector along another. But I have one other thing up here in the heading that I want to talk about, too. Um, so this quantity, I have a dot product, which gives a scalar answer. And then I'm dividing by a magnitude of a vector, which also gives a scalar answer. So this quantity here is a scalar. It might be positive or negative, but it's just a number. Sometimes what I want is not just a number that tells me both length and direction uh, for how one vector is lined up with another. But what I also want, perhaps, is another vector that is along W. That is what we call the projection of one vector onto another. So my vector W here was this short, shorter vector that I started with. And now what I want to construct is this vector that is along W but uh, represents how much of V is lined up with W here. So this new vector that I'm going to represent here uh, is, the, is called the projection of V onto W. And that's true whether we're in this case where we have an acute angle or in this case where we have an obtuse angle, where I have that projection of one vector on another. So this is a scalar quantity that we talked about here, component of V onto W. And the other thing that I want here is a vector quantity. All right, so what I want is a vector of a particular length that's lined up with another vector. And we actually did that in another video. So this really shouldn't be a separate formula to memorize. There is a formula in your textbook, and you can look at that and memorize that if you want. But if you just kind of think about what you're doing here and what this component represents, you should be able to think about how to use this number to rescale to get a vector that is along W but has this uh, number as its length and perhaps changes to opposite direction if we have a negative for that. All right, so I'm going to write a formula down, but this should not be a new formula for you to memorize. I just want to emphasize a little bit with some notation here. So we write, similar to the way we write component of one vector onto another, projection of one vector onto another. So this would be the projection of V onto W. 
and that is equal to this scalar And then what I want to do is use that to scale uh, this vector along w. So I need to represent a unit vector that's in the same direction as w, and then use this scalar to multiply times that. So w divided by its magnitude. Uh, so this is the scalar that I'm using to rescale the vector. And the second part here, w divided by its magnitude, is a unit vector, unit vector, that is along w. All right, so this is another formula which you will need to know. Uh, my advice is not to spend a lot of time memorizing this as a separate formula, but to understand how to use the component of one vector onto another and use what you know about rescaling vectors to be a particular length. Uh, to combine those two ideas. So you really just have one formula to kind of think about. All right, in the next video, we'll look at some examples. We'll write down some specific vectors and do some calculations and look at some geometry using these two formulas.